In this video, we are going to look at matrix representations of relations, and we're also going to look at how to determine properties of relations based on the matrix representation. So let's look at two more operations on matrices, or two more operations on relations that are represented by matrices. And the first is composition. And in composition, essentially what we're going to do in order to find the composition is to take the Boolean product of the opposite order. Because with composition, we always really go in the opposite order. You start from the inside out, etc. So this is actually the matrix that represents the relation S with the Boolean product of the matrix that represents the relation G. And so what we're doing here is we're this one, remember, gets a little bit complicated. This is where I'm going to take the first row of MS, and I'm going to think about it as a column. M, it's 1, 0, 1, so I'm just rewriting that first row. And remember, I'm going to look at 1 and 1. And so instead of having to write 1 and 1, I'm just going to write that 1 and 1 would be 1. And then remember, it's an OR, and then 0 and 1 would be 0, and 1 and 0 would be 0. And remember, those are ORs, and so what I'm going to be looking for is at least 1, 1, to give me a 1 over here. And then I'm going to do the next row, excuse me, the next column. So 1 and 0 is 0. 0 and 1 is 0, 1 and 1 is 1. So that means this is a 1. And then 1 and 1 is 1. And I really don't have to check the rest, but that would be 0 and 1. And so I've got 1, 1, 1 is my first row. Let me write those a little better. 1, 1, 1. And then I would just do the same thing, and I'll switch up colors so we can see. Now I'm going to use 0, 1, 0, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take 0 and 1, which is 0, 1 and 1, which is 1, and 0 and 0, which is 0, and then 0 and 0, which is 0, 1 and 1, which is 1, 0 and 1, which is 0, and then 0 and 1, which is 0, 1 and 0, which is 0, 0 and 1, which is 0. So my next row is 1, 1, 0. And then last time through, let's use yellow. And I'm taking 0, 0, 0. And we can pretty quickly see that we're just going to end up with zeros here because we can never possibly have two ones. So that would be 0, 0, 0. So that is the composition, which is essentially just the Boolean product in the opposite order in which the matrices are given to you. Now, if I take um, matrix S and square it, it's really kind of the same thing that we just did, except I'm doing it with MS um, matrix S twice. And so again, I'm going to take 1, 0, 1, and I'm just going to be basically multiplying matrix S by itself. So I'm doing the exact same thing. So that would give me 1 or 0 or 0, 0 or 0 or 0, 1 or 0 or 0, which for my first row gives me 1, 0, 1. And then I will try another color and another row. So 0, 1, 0. So now I would get 0, 0, 0. And I'm not drawing the little loopies this time. 0, 1, 0. And then 0, 0, 0. And that gives me 0, 1, 0 for my next row. And then let's switch colors again. And I'm using 0, 0, 0, which we already discovered last time. 
was just going to be a bunch of zeros because there's no way for me to get a 1 if I'm taking everything times 0. So that is my square, my matrix squared, is really just the Boolean product of itself. So a digraph is really just a, re a directed graph, and we haven't talked much about graphs, um, but essentially it's just a pictorial representation of a relation. And it's directed, which means it gives me arrows that go in the direction that shows me the relation. So if A is, has an arrow to B, then obviously A comma B is in my relation. And really that's all it is. So I've sort of um, defined it for you officially. V is the set of vertices, which is the points that I put in green. And um, E is the set of the edges that connects them, etc. But really, we're just saying, hey, all of the green points are your values that are in your relation, and the arrows tell you which values are connected to which other values. So if I wanted to look at what relation is represented by the digraph, I would say the relation is, and I'm going to just start with A so that I try to keep it as organized as possible so I don't forget anything, um, but A here has an arrow going towards B. So A comma B is an ordered pair in my relation. And I'm going to go ahead and do all of them that are leaving A first, because I know A is going to be that first value. So A goes to B. Does A go to C? Well, this one tells me that yes, A does map to C. And then does A map to D? No, because even though A, D are connected, Notice the arrow is actually pointing from D to A. So AD is not in my relation. So now I'm going to move on to B. And coming from B is absolutely nothing. So B doesn't map to anything. Even though things map to B, notice there are no out arrows um, coming out of B. And notice up here um, an initial vertex would be obviously the vertex that it's starting from going to a terminating vertex. So we can see that B is only a terminating vertex and it is a terminating vertex for actually three separate points. So let's move on to C since B didn't get us anywhere. Does C map to A? It does right here. So C comma A is in my relation. Does C map to B? It does. So C comma B, and notice this guy, C maps to itself, so C comma C is in my relation. Does C map to D? No, it doesn't. And then the only things left are D, so does D map to A? You betcha, D comma A. And does D map to B? Yes, it does. And does D map to anything else? Nope, because I used a different color, and so I can see that I've covered everything on the graph. Let's take a look now at another example. So this one's going in reverse. And then in addition to drawing in the digraph, I also wanted to talk about how to look visually for the relation or the properties of the relation. So first we'll do the easy part, drawing the digraph. So a relation that goes from one to one means I have a loop on one. 1 to 2, 2 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1, 3 to 2. So typically when you have 2 like that, I'm going to edit this one to be a little loopier. That's typically how we will draw um, when we have two nodes connected with two edges. And then 3 to 3. So that is beautiful. We did a great job. We can just be done, right? Um, not quite yet. Now we have to take a look at the properties based on our digraph. So of course we could just look at the relation and do it the same way we did you know, back in our last section where we talked about the properties, but let's talk about how we determine that by looking at the digraph. First, is the relation reflexive? Well, this one, yes, is reflexive. Here's how we know. Each node has to have a path back to itself because a relation says that for all values 1, 2, and 3, 1, 1 is in there, 2, 2 is in there, and 3, 3 is in there. So visually we're just looking at those loops. 
is the relation symmetric? And this is no, not symmetric. For us to have a symmetric relation, we would need all nodes to be connected with two edges, one going in each direction. So for instance, if 2 comma 3 is in there, my symmetric property says 3 comma 2 is in there, which is true for 2, 3, and 3, 2. But if you'll notice right here, this implies that 3, 1 is in there, but without this other edge coming back, 1, 3 is not in there. So not symmetric. So let's take a look at anti-symmetric. Anti-symmetric says if AB is in there, and BA is in there, then A must be equal to B. So what I'm looking for is to not have this situation because this says 2, 3 is in there and 3, 2 is in there, but obviously we know that 2 is not equal to 3. So if you have just one edge connecting two nodes, and these guys are okay too, because obviously one comma one is in there and one comma one is in there, therefore one is equal to one is gonna work every time. So it's okay to have those um, loops back to your, themselves, but it's not necessary to do that. But what is necessary is that we only have one edge connecting the nodes. So no, not anti-symmetric. And the last one is transitive, and transitive takes a little more work just as it always does. Transitive says, essentially, if I can get from one node to another node using two paths, then I should be able to get there directly as well. So for instance, I can go from two to three, and I can go from three to one, The question is, can I go from two to one? So essentially I'm saying I have to have a direct path that goes from two to one, and I don't have that here. So because of that, it is not transitive. Up next, we're going to take a look at a special kind of relation called an equivalence relation.